It is 7 o'clock. It is the 17th day of November, and I am your grumpy guide to all things gaming, the liberal boosh, the toxic gatekeeper, the OG GM wearing the grumpy hat again. Yeah, this is going to be the official hat, at least for a while, because bah humbug. So, Tasha's book of bubbling everything is out today, tomorrow, this week. On the stores, forty-seven dollars plus tax, minor, give or take, where you go, where you get it. We mentioned before my issues with it, and that I would go deeper into my issues with Tasha. So this is it. So if this is a topic that's gonna upset you, trigger you, whatever, no matter where you lean on the political spectrum in regards to the all the crap that is being associated with this book, um, stop watching now. Um, I am going to try and be as impartial as I can. I think my experience and my whatever wherewithal allows me to look at the topic from both points of view and try and come to a happy... Why is this so fuzzy? Is it fuzzy on your end? Maybe it's just my end. Probably need to invest in a real camera and a mic and a better computer and an apartment a sandwich somebody i'll explain the sandwich thing okay so we know i have a lot of issues with tasha's uh, these are my issues i'm sure there's plenty of people out there who are very excited about this book and more power to you especially if you are going into an actual brick and mortar game store like Cess games and anime here in ventura or north coast role playing in northern california or any other friendly local game store and buying from them if you're buying the actual physical copy thank you very much because you are supporting the stores. If you're ordering it from Amazon, well, Amazon, you know, doesn't need the money. Wizards of the Coast might need the money, but please go into your local friendly neighborhood game store and buy it there. That's it. Um, okay, so going into finding out when this book was coming in, it has been met with anger, confusion, controversy, stuff. Um, there's lots of things in this book that are changing the paradigm of Dungeons and Dragons. We're not going to look at D&D the same way if we take this book as canon going forward. So let's just try and take all the anger and upsetness and whatever out of it and just address the issues at hand and as impartially as we can. We know what they were trying to do. And there's nothing wrong with what they're trying to do. Fuck it. Communism works great on paper. Right? Um, so the point, if you take away everything else, the point is that our hobby can be seen as very inclusive. It's the, it's the domain of the fat white guy and has been for a very long time. And... People have an image that, well, certain whatever, certain things, and blah blah blah, and we blah, you know, like when any any other secular group is often met with, you know, disdain by the outside group. The effort of the point of Tasha's and the changes and changing things to ancestries and heritages and trying to address the what people believe to be sexist, racist, misogynistic homophobic issues in previous Wizards of the Coast game. Whether they are there or not, and I think I lean on the spectrum that they're not there. If you're seeing racist, homophobic, sexist, misogynistic things in older Wizards of the Coast pro product, then you probably will see those anywhere. You're probably going to see them on this book of stamps. You're probably going to see them in my hat. You're probably going to see them anywhere because you're looking for them. They're not there. Okay, they were never intended to be there. There's nothing racist, sexist, misogynistic, opinionated, false history about Oriental adventures or the orcs or the dro or whatever. They're all just fantasy creations and they don't really have any effect on real life whatsoever. But those issues exist in the world. Those issues exist at the game table. Um, and some people could perceive the issues that were there as, you know, those things, whether they were intended to or not. And I think, I don't think they ever were intended to. I mean, there are definitely games that do exist, like Fatal, that were totally designed to be racist and sexist and monocist, you know. But these weren't. Oriental Adventures was never meant to insult anyone. The, the Vashante 
in Ravenloft are never meant to insult anybody. Orcs and Drow are never meant to make anybody feel like, oh, you're racist, you're sexist, you're evil, whatever. They're just whatever. They're fantasy tropes to tell a story. But people, Wizards of the Coast, wanting to be progressive and wanting to address the issues that are haunting our world and make people who want to be part of this hobby feel welcome, felt that they needed to address those issues of racism, sexism, blah, 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 blah. And it is our job as role players, as the one hobby that exists in the planet that anybody can be a part of, you know? You don't have to be The Rock to play D&D. You don't have to be Neil deGrasse Tyson to play D&D. You don't have to be Madonna to play D&D. You don't have to be, you know, the 0.00.001% of 1% of 1% of the population. You can just be an every day ordinary whatever. Male, female, black, white, green, gay, straight, rich, poor, old, young, role-playing says, I don't fucking care who you are. Sit down, let's play. It's make-believe with rules. So using the hobby as a tool to address these issues in today's termalistulous, termalistulous, chaotic environment where these things are so rampant and so many people are crashing against each other over such simple things as we are all created equal is not wrong. There's nothing wrong with them trying to use a D&D product to address these issues and trying to create a discussion and a safe place where people can feel comfortable and feel like these issues are appreciated, confronted, dealt with, explored, and trying to create a world where people are feel, you know, more inclusive, more welcome, and more like, you know, it, it doesn't matter. The table, well, the game says, I don't care who you are, come play. You are safe and comfortable and okay here at this table. There is nothing wrong with that. There was everything wrong with the way they went about doing it. It's fourth edition all the way over again. It's the same thing people were talking about with the guy who did um, Fate of Cthulhu and this other things, this SJW woke whatever, you know, everything is wrong. Everything is not politically correct. I'm insulted by everything on the, on the behalf of someone else. I'm not gay, but I'm sure a gay person is insulted by this book. I'm not black, but I'm sure a black person is insulted by this book. I'm not oriental, but I'm sure somebody oriental is insulted by this book. So we're going to go out of our way to make anybody who has any association with these products feel bad. You bought Oriental Adventures. You're a rapist. You're a, you're a racist. You're, you're homophobic. And that was wrong. That is wrong. And that is the issue, one of the many issues with this book, is that while the idea sound... The way Wizards of the Coast has gone about it and addressed the issue is not making the situation better. If anything, it is making the situation worse, but because it is picking at wounds, it is ripping bandits off, it is aggravating people instead of comforting them. No matter where you sit on the spectrum of how they chose to address these issues, it's pulling us apart when it was supposed to try and bring us together. So that is my main issue with this stance of theirs, <clears throat> with the choice of theirs, with the, the issues that they chose and the way that they chose them and the way they went about cho choosing to address them in this book and, with the, and the legacy rule and the way they're changing and all this other crap. Most of these ideas aren't even our original. I mean, half the stuff in Tasha's was, cho was pretty much stolen from Pathfinder 2nd Edition. So that's our main issue. I'm going to get something to drink and you're going to watch. Support me, Juice! <laughs> Moving on to our second issue with Tasha's, because, I mean, that one's huge. That one's huge. These issues exist in the real world. We know it. I mean, doesn't matter what or blah, blah, blah. Where, where you lay on the politic, political spectrum, these issues exist. And role-playing should be a teaching tool to make the world a better place and make people feel comfortable and address whatever issues they have in a safe, comfortable place. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the way Wizards of the Coast went around doing it, this is just 
like it's like there was a bag filled with stupid choices and a teeny little box that had smart choices and they decided well let's go look in this bag because it's bigger so instead of addressing these issues with smart comfortable culturally appropriate politically correct ways to make everybody feel happy we're gonna do go about it the exact opposite and do it in the most stupid insulting way we can to make everybody feel stupid so that's our first issue with this book our second issue with this book is there's all these new classes all these new rules all these new erratas that you're paying fifty dollars for when every one of those was made free over the past couple years online either between the stuff that was being done in the previous books because there's a lot of stuff in tasha's that's from sword coast from theros from ravinica from the unearthed arcana stuff that's online from stuff from the dm's guild from the free stuff that people were making available for, Wizard, for dungeons and dragons from all the srd stuff D D fifth edition stuff that came out over the past three four years there's nothing new in this product it is all stuff that was already available for us if we just wanted to take the time to look for it and it's not like wizards of the coast was see sneaking and quiet about it it's not like they hid it at the bottom of the stairway in a dark basement guarded by leopards uh hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy reference there in case you can get it no no they they, they made it every if you know Unearth their cannon was well known. And all this other stuff was out there. And over the past few months, they've been pointing, pointing out spoilers that they put online. Here's what's in chapter six. And literally, all you have to do is go to these spoilers and go, oh, okay, well, I don't need to buy the book because everything's right here. So that's our second issue. Why pay for the cow if the milk's for free, ma? Will this change the way we look at our hobby? Of course it will. Everything that goes into the hobby changes the way we look at it because D&D and our hobby is constantly evolving. It needs to evolve. It always needs to keep moving forward and become better and better and better. And D&D is always going to be there. It's never going to go away. I, can, I, can, I will bet money that for the 50th anniversary of D&D, and we're on year 48, 49, so... Somewhere in 2021 or 2022, we will see 6th edition. And Tasha's and everything in Tasha's is sort of the hint. Here's what 6th edition is going to look like, kind of. So bottom line, you know, Tasha's is being put out there for 50 bucks because Wizards of the Coast wants to make money. And Hasbro, the corporation that controls Wizards of the Coast, wants to make money. And this is the way they thought they could make shill us for $50 a pop, $110 if you buy the super special edition of Tasha's. Tasha's is a good idea done completely wrong. Wizards of the Coast seems to have a history of this. Now, I can understand Wizards of the Coast, you know, I can't understand why Hasbo lets this has to happen, but whatever. I understand why they chose to do these things. Make money, address social issues, get people to buy, spend money on something they could have gotten for free, move the game forward by appealing to the broadest mass audience. Oh, I can have guns and DNA now? Fuck yeah, I'm buying this book. But, as usual with Wizards of the Coast, and I guess their parent company Hasbro, the way they chose to do this is just utterly wrong. Utterly bad business. Utterly stupid. Bottom line, you wanted to, at some point in time, your hearts were in the right place. Let's address these issues because... Role-playing is the perfect place where everybody's welcome and nobody should ever feel disfranchised. I'm the last, apparently, I have a, really, a reputation of making people feel disfranchised, so I'm probably the last person to be saying this. 
He's a toxic gatekeeper. He makes D and D no fun. Support me, Juice. But I'm one person, and I'm an asshole. You should not be made to feel like crap when you're at the D and D table or any role playing game table. No matter who you are, no matter what you are, no matter what you're into, no matter what your kink is, because we're all fucked up freaks. And role-playing is the one place where we, it's okay to be a fucked-up freak, where everybody can just come, no matter who the fuck you are, and play. And what better way than play to address issues like what's going on in the world? That was a good idea. The way they chose to go about those ideas? Bah humbug, Wizards of the Coast. All you've done is make the situation worse and cost yourself people like me. Because I cannot, in good conscience, you know, be part of D&D right now. It just, it just feels so wrong and so dirty and just so, like, ugh, I just, I mean, it's just, ugh. I want to help. I want to be a positive force, but I can't support your product because everything you're doing just makes me sick. Now, segue... Obviously, if I'm at Seth's Games and Anime, I'm going to run 5th Edition D&D because by running 5th Edition at Seth's Games and Anime, I make Seth Games and Anime money because people will buy product while we're running a game in the store for 5th Edition. So I will gladly sacrifice my personal moral code to make my friend's shops money. But if I was running a game at home and I had people and I was like, hey, could convince them to play something other than 5th edition? You know damn well I try. Sadly, this is a 5th edition town where I live. And if you even mention another game, it's Pitchforks and Torches. That's probably how I got my reputation. Because I kept trying to get people to play other games. And they're like, no, fuck you. You make the game no fun because you want to play something other than D&D. So I thought I would take this moment to explain. And I probably have done a horrible job to explain my issues with Tasha's. And they are, as I've said, first and foremost, forget all the political crap, you're spending money on something you can get for free. But if you are gonna spend the money, please buy it from Sess Games Anime here in Venturi, California, or at North Coast Roleplay in Eureka, California, or at any other friendly local game store, brick and mortar store across the country here on the United States, or in the world, or in the galaxy, or in the universe, because you need to support our small little mom and pop friendly local game stores right now with all the crap that's going on. Don't buy it from Amazon. Fuck Amazon. Go buy it from a store. And second, because of the political woke SJW, conservative, Republican, Democratic, liberal, whatever, bullshit. And I, again, I apologize because I probably did this wrong, but I felt it was this topic that I needed to discuss. Now, I will try not to talk about Tasha's anymore. I can't guarantee you, but I will try. Look, Mommy, teacher says whenever a bell rings, an angel gets its wings. Okay, if you appreciate this content and want to hear more, comment down below. If you don't appreciate this content and think I should set the fuck up, comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet. Help us hit 300 subs by January 1st. I mean, yes, the goal is five, but realistically three. And if you're feeling generous with the holidays coming upon us, maybe, you know, toss a coin to your witcher because this technically is my only job. I have been your grumpy guide to all things gaming, the OG GM with another grumpy rant on gaming. I will talk to you losers later. Bah humbug.